Hello friends, thank you for watching this video. I am Mohammed, and today we're gonna be discussing how we can actually utilize Docker Compose in order for us to run our .NET Web API. We're gonna be seeing how we can actually inject a dynamic connection string to our application, and we're gonna be seeing how we can actually run our entire web API with the database within a Docker Compose file. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. It really helps the channel. As well, if you'd like to support me, please consider supporting me on Patreon or buying me a coffee. With that said, grab your cup of coffee and let's get started. So what I have here is we have a web API, which is built on .NET 8. We have already covered this web API in the previous videos, a couple of videos on how we did set it up in the description down below or here somewhere. But basically within this web API, we have the few different controllers. So we have the drivers controller, we have the achievements controller, we'll be able to add drivers and add achievements to those drivers. We have here our program.cs, where actually we're loading the connection string for our SQL server utilizing. We have here our program.cs, where we're actually relying on SQL server to store our database. And then we're doing some configuration with our, so inside here we have our program CS, where we're actually utilizing SQL Server in order for us to store our database. We have a class library where we're utilizing unit of work to manage everything regarding our database. And inside here, I have my application DB contacts where I'm configuring all of my databases. As well, I have another class library it's called entities, which where I have all of my DB sets that I need to use in order for me to run my application. As well, I have two extra files. I have one Docker file, which basically helped me containerize my application. And this is a very simple Docker file, where as you can see here, I'm relying on ASP.NET image in order for me to have my base image. I'm exposing two ports, port 8080 and port 8081. And then I'm having a build image running inside utilizing the .NET SDK, where I'm actually referring to all of the different applications that I have or projects that I have within my solution. And then I'm restoring those packages to make sure everything is running. Once I have done that, I'm copying everything to inside my build container, where I'm actually able to create a full build of my project. Once that build has been completed, I'm able to publish it utilizing the release config configuration as you can see here I'm doing a .NET publish in order for me to publish my APIs. Once that is done I'm actually containerizing it into the publish image that we have created and then I'm basically running it through the formula one API DLL. Pretty straightforward here. I have another file which is, is a docker compose file and within this docker compose file what I have is I have my SQL server which is actually relying on and within the SQL server as you can see I have different configuration. We have set up this docker compose file in a previous video so I'll also link it in the description down below or somewhere here we can actually watch it but basically it's a pretty simple docker compose file where i'm relying on a sql server database i'm utilizing an image which is available on docker hub in order for me to rely to run sql server on my machine and then i'm specifying the environment variable for this sql server i'm telling it that it's going to be the express version and then i'm specifying the ports that i want to connect to it so now once we have added all of this now what i want to do is we're going to be updating my docker compose file in order for it to contain the configuration for my web apis and and once we have done that, then we're going to be updating it furthermore in order for us to have a dynamic connection string. So whenever we are actually running it, we can have different connection string our application can connect to rather than hard coding it into our web APIs. So let's see how we can do this. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to update this to contain a new service. And this service is going to be my web APIs. So I'm going to call this formula one API. And then what I want to do here is I'm going to specify the build environment for this. And I need to specify the contacts or where it's going to find my Docker file. So I'm just going to say contacts. I'm going to put dot. It means that it's going to find it in the root directory. And after this, what I want to do is I'm going to specify the ports that I'm going to be utilizing to connect to my application. And I'm going to say that I'm going to connect from port 8090 to port 88. Once I have done this, I'm just going to open my terminal. I'm going to clear it up. And inside my terminal, I'm just going to put docker dash compose up dash dash build. And what it's going to be doing is going to build everything again for me and it's going to run everything that I need. So let's give this a few seconds until it finishes all of the building for us and then we can actually utilize it. So now that this has finished, as we can see here, my SQL server is running. We can see my web API is running. It's utilizing the internal port 8080 and I'm actually able to connect to it through port 8090. So once we have done all of that, there's one thing that I want to do in order for me to make sure everything is running as it should be. I'm just going to go to my program.cs in order for us to have a swagger available out of the box. I know this is not the right way to do it, and but this is only for demo. I'm just gonna allow Swagger into my Docker image. Again, in real case scenario, you don't have to do this. So I'm just gonna run my command again, and this will take a few seconds now to complete. All it needs to do is just rebuild my application. As for SQL Server, it's already been configured. I don't really need to do anything there. So now we can see the application is running. Now I'm gonna open this application inside my web browser. So inside my web browser. So now as we can see here, my application is running on Swagger, and I can see it is running on port 8090, which means it's running through 
my Docker. And basically what I wanna do is I wanna actually connect to my APIs. So if I'm gonna do right now, try it out, execute, we're gonna be able to see here that I'm gonna be seeing errors now. Why am I seeing errors? Because basically right now my application is trying to connect to a database which doesn't exist because basically what I have done here is I have hard coded my connection string into my application. And basically whenever my application is now normally running, it's just gonna assume that the database exists. It's not gonna automatically apply the migrations that it's needed. It's not gonna be automatically creating whatever it needs to do in order for my application, for in order for my database to actually exist for my application to run. So what do I need to do in order for me to fix this? First of all, I'm gonna stop my application right now. I'm just gonna put docker-compose down. This means everything is stopped. We can see here everything has stopped here. And now what I wanna do is inside my Formula One API, I'm gonna be creating a new directory, add directory. I'm gonna call this directory services. And within the services, I'm gonna be creating a new class. I'm gonna call this class database management service. So once I have done this, what I wanna do here is I wanna create a script that's actually check if the database exists or not. And if it does not exist, it will create it for me. So let's see how we can do this. So we're gonna put public static void and it's gonna be migration initialization. And this method is gonna take the following argument, pi application builder, I'm gonna call it up. So once I have done this, what I wanna do right now is I'm gonna rely on this application, i application builder in order for me to utilize my migration services. So I'm gonna put using for service scope equal app dot application services dot create scope perfect and now what i want to do is i'm going to rely on the scope in order for me to do the migration so i'm going to put service scope dot service provider dot get service and in this case it's going to be my application db contacts so i'm going to put app db contacts and then all i'm going to say here is for this app db contacts i need to make sure my database has migration enabled and when i do this it's not doesn't only check if my database exists and it will create it if it doesn't exist it will also take all of the latest changes that i have applied for my database through my application through the code first approach it will automatically apply them so i don't really need to manage this on my database anymore the application will be responsible to do this for me as we go and this is the really cool thing about it. It will automatically know that there's a migration that needs to apply on the database and does not require any manual intervention from my side. So once I have added this, now the next step, if I need to go back to my program.cs and after my application is built, so what I wanna do here is I'm just gonna put my database management service and I'm gonna call my migration initialization and I'm gonna pass the app, which is the my web application we have just built. And this is gonna be the main items that I have here, which basically I'm heavily relying on my application to run. And then I'm actually initializing the migrations for my database. Because here, if you take a look inside my formula on the data service, I have migrations files, which create my two tables, the drivers table and the achievements table. And because of that, I'm actually able to automatically create these inside my application. So now what I'm gonna do is gonna open my terminal and I'm gonna run my Docker compose again. So I'm gonna clear this up. I'm gonna put docker dash compose up. I'm gonna say dash dash build so it will rebuild everything for me and does not take a cache copy. So now once I have done this, this will take a few seconds now in order for me to recreate all of the applications again and then it will initialize it. So now we can see it has been created. Now I can see SQL Server is running and now once SQL Server started to run, we can see it initializing and now if I take a look up here, we should be able to see that my data, my web API is actually running right now. We can see my web API is running and it's actually having some problems connecting to it which is and we can see that there are certain problems that the application is facing because it's not able to connect to my sql server which is understandable because again my connection string that i'm relying on is actually directly injected into my application and it's not actually able to find my database in order for me to run it and we can see how we can fix this right now. So I'm gonna stop my application again. And the last part that I wanna actually do this here in order for me to fix all of this is I'm gonna go back to my program.cs and what I wanna do is, ins is instead of directly injecting this, I wanna make this dynamic. So it will automatically find out those variables that's needed or to construct a connection string and then it will inject them into my application. So what I wanna do right now is I'm just gonna command this out. And instead of this, I'm gonna add the follow. So uh, what I wanna say right now here is I'm gonna specify all of the different components of a connection string and I'm gonna make sure that they are injected dynamically. If they are not injected, it's gonna take a default value. So we're gonna start by a server equal builder dot configuration. And I'm gonna say I need my server and if it's not available i'm just gonna put localhost so just to make this easier i'm just embedding it directly here but usually what you want to do is you want to read directly from your app settings but again for simplicity's sake i'm doing it like this then once after the server i want to specify my database 
So var database equal builder dot configuration again database here. If it's not provided, we're gonna put the database name. So I'm gonna call it one app database. I'm gonna specify my server port. So I'm gonna put var port equal builder dot configuration, and I'm gonna call this port. And the default port for SQL Server is 1433. Then once I have done that, now I need to specify my SA password. So I'm gonna say pass equal builder dot configuration. It's gonna be password, and this password is gonna be one two three. Actually, let's make it YouTube 2022, 2024. And now I need to specify my user that I'm going to be connecting with. So I'm going to put var user equal builder dot configuration and I'm going to say db user and it's going to be sa just to make my life a bit easier here and that's going to be mainly it for everything that needs to be injected dynamically again this should not be here in a real life scenario they need to be dynamically loaded through app settings but again for simplicity sake I'm going to make it this way and the last item that I want to do here is I'm going to be rebuilding my connection string so I'm going to put var connection string equal and this is going to be dynamically loaded from these so first of all we're going to add the server equal server then we're specify the port then after we do this we're going to specify the initial catalog equal it's going to be the database and once we specify this then we're going to specify the username and the password and this is going to be user id equal user and then we're going to choose the password it's going to be password equal password and the last thing is going to be the certificates which is going to be same as always trusted server certificate equal true and once we have done this now all i need to do is just run my application through my docker compose but in order for me to inject these dynamically i need to update it so if i go now to my docker compose file what i want to do here is after the build i want to add all of the configuration that's needed so i'm going to add an environment variable and within this environment variable i'm going to pass all of those different configuration that my program.cs require like the server database port the password and the db user so let's start by adding them the first one is going to be my server so we're just going to add it here and i'm going to say the first one is going to be server and the server that i'm going to be relying is my msc SQL Server that I have just created. So that's going to be my SQL Server that I'm going to be relying on. So the first one is going to be server and it's going to be my SQL Server that I have just created before because it's relying on it. Then what I want to do is I'm actually going to specify my port. So if we take a look here, we can see here that the port is this one. So I'm just going to copy paste it. I'm going to port. I'm going to specify 1433 because that's also the port that the server is using. Then I'm going to see here that it's going to require a database. So I'm going to specify the database that it needs to have. So again, database and my database, we're just going to call it F1 app database v1, for example, or v2, what we can call it whatever we want. Then I want to specify my user. So we're going to have to specify my DB user here. So we're just going to take this and I'm going to specify my DB user. And in this case, it's going to be SA. And then I need to specify the password that I'm going to be utilizing in order for me to connect. As we can see here, it's, re it's relying on the password. And I'm just going to put it here. And I'm going to put the password. It's going to be similar to what we have done before, YouTube 2021. And once we have done this, now my actually my application is actually dynamically connecting to this SQL Server in order for it to run. So now if I open my terminal, I clear this up. I put docker-compose pop dash dash build and now it's gonna actually build everything again this will take a few seconds to be complete so now we can see sql server is running and now we can see that my formula one is running and we can see as well that my migration for this database has automatically been executed successfully so if i take a look here we can see that it started doing the database command for migration it already started to create the tables and if i take a look at the end of all of this we can see that everything has completed successfully for the initial migration and now if i go back to my web browser and what I want to do here is I click on execute. It should be empty right now. We don't have anything. But if I try to post a driver and I'm going to call it, let's say Muhammad, I'm going to say Rawand, driver number 23. I'm going to say year 2000. Click on execute. And we can see I got a 201 for it, which is mean that has been executed successfully. Now, if I click on execute here, we're actually able to get the driver back from SQL Server utilizing my Docker Compose file as an orchestrator between my web API and my SQL Server. So as we can see here the power of docker compose file where i'm actually able to orchestrate different services i'm actually able to connect these two different services together i'm able to configure them in an internal network within docker and i'm actually able to do all of this within a single file which allows me to facilitate my configuration of my applications as well here what i have also what's able to do is to make sure that my application is relying on a dynamic connection string rather than, than a hard-coded connection string which allow my application to connect to different database within different environments 
environment. So for example, for a dev environment, I could use one current, one database, testing environment, different one, production, a different one. And we can see here the flexibility that this gave me for my application. So in essence, uh, what we have done here is we are actually able to make our application much more flexible in order for us to have much more functionalities integrated within our web APIs. I was able to leverage Docker Compose and Docker in order for me to basically utilize different uh, database services in order for me to run my application. I was able to utilize my EF core, the code first approach to automatically migrate all of the scripts that's needed in order for my application to have rather than me having to the manually up uh, configuring every single one of these databases with these different different configuration. And basically I was able to manage all of this within a single file within my database, within my application, which is my Docker Compose file. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, please like, share and subscribe. If you have any questions, please make sure you put them in the comments down below. Thanks again for watching and have a great day.